going to talk with um, the Honorable <laughs> Mark Corrin. Uh, Mark is with uh, AOA Wizard and uh, Alpha Systems. He's also the mayor of his town, which when, when you spend as much time with elected officials as I do, you learn that you begin to call them by the honor, and you yeah. look honorable. Oh, yeah, I do. Mr. Yeah, Mayor, you don't so. have to do that, though. It's, I'm okay with that. <laughs> well, thank you very much for taking some time to talk yeah. with us today. Um, we want to start off because your company was has been working with Mitsubishi for a long time to put an angle of attack indicator in the MU2, which a lot of people say is sometimes uh, a challenging airplane to fly. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. I don't want to cast any dispersions on the, on the airplane. It's a good airplane, but it sometimes can be challenging. Why was it important to put angle of attack in the MU MU2? Well, the the bottom line is angle of attack is what every pilot is flying anyways. Mm -hmm. To me, airspeed indicator indicators are broke. Um, to give a pilot more instantaneous information through angle of attack um, is the utmost importance. I believe for every airplane flying, um, not just because I make it, but because of the stories that are told to me. You got to remember, I've been doing this now for over 19 years, mm -hmm. and the success stories of pilots that put our product in and the commitment to us constantly looking for better and newer ways. Um, Mitsubishi approached us about a year and a half ago and said, we want to put an angle of attack system in our aircraft to give that extra edge for every pilot to help benefit them in every phase of flight. Um, they came to us, we evaluated um, what they were looking for, and over the last year and a half, we developed a custom kit. It's actually a standard kit, a dual, um, a dual displayed kit, pressurized, and then we created the flap module and other mm -hmm. things that allow for more input. What goes into developing a system, and I, I know when you introduced the AOA for the MU2, and it talked about it was calibrated, calibrated for every flap setting. What goes into making those calibrations, and how does that change the angle of attack on the airplane? Just kind of give us angle of attack 101. Yeah, um, every aircraft has an alpha range from cruise mm -hmm. to stall. Every aircraft, I don't care what air aircraft it is, mm -hmm. whether it's a Mitsubishi or whatever, flaps, we're always taught as simple aerodynamics that when you add flaps, you automatically change the coefficient of lift. Mm -hmm. That is true to a degree. How much you change the angle of attack in some aircraft have negligible impact by the deployment of flaps. In the Mitsubishi, because of the giant size of the flaps or the percentage of flaps, um, the percentage of flaps to the total surface area of the wing, mm -hmm. their offset or the change of alpha is great enough that calibrating clean is the worst case lift of the wing. Mm -hmm. When you deploy flaps to 10 degrees, it changes the angle of attack slightly. So we calibrate clean, 10 degrees, 20, and landing. So the this, this system, our system automatically corrects and looks at those flap deployments mm -hmm. and changes its calibration by giving the pilot an accurate indication based on the real coefficient of lift for that, those changes over the entire span of flap deployment. So across your product spectrum, do all of your products, when you, they are installed in an airplane, do they all take that uh, flap setting into account? They can. You add the flap module. Mm -hmm. It's an, a, a new module that we just came out with. Mm -hmm. Um, and proved through the Mitsubishi and the PA-46 and now the TBM and a lot of those aircraft mm -hmm. that have a giant enough flap or a large enough flap that change the coefficient of lift. Let's talk about the, uh, the Alpha system a little bit here because you brought us a, a nice little <laughs> display that we can, we can really give our viewers an idea of what they're going to be seeing when they, when they fly the Alpha system AOA. Yes. So let's just do a quick little show and tell. I want to have... Um, uh, if we can get a, a look at the uh, the controller here that we've got with the nice little P51 Mustang that we're going to play with, and then we've got the actual display, and there's also now an add-on head-up display Correct. that is part of the um, that is part of the system. So let's just have a quick show and tell, Mark. Well, what I did is I I realized that one of the most important things to get pilots to recognize first is you're not flying airspeed; you're flying what airspeed represents, which is angle of attack. So what I did is I came up with one night a way to connect 
and show a pilot that every aircraft has an alpha range from cruise, mm -hmm. which is the lowest alpha, lowest range. Mm -hmm. And as you pitch back, it changes its angle of attack to the highest alpha you can to stall, and, I, mm -hmm. and if you pull there, that's stall. Okay. If you're stalled at this degree or this degree or this degree mm -hmm. coming in, you can be going down at 300 knots and still be stalled. So what we did is we said, let's put a training tool together that connects angle of attack in a simple tool mm -hmm. that directly connects. Every pilot that I've ever shown this to automatically understands that's what angle of attack is. So if you pitch to the blue light right there, mm -hmm. that's 30% margin above lift. So in the military, that's called optimum alpha angle. Mm -hmm. That's perfect approach in every single airplane flying. So they use thrust to increase or decrease their descent rate. Whether you're in a 60 degree bank maneuver or a 45 degree bank mover, mm -hmm. if that blue light's on, you're safe. You're a 30% margin or a 30% away from stalling. No matter the bank angle, slip, or skid. Okay. It's safe. So we connected that with the AOA display to directly show, and then I hand this to a pilot. Right. And then as you pull the tail up and down, mm -hmm. it gives you the display right. right in front of you. Okay. So now if you bank angle or position, it's right. still the same alpha no matter, and it's not attitude. And that's what everybody thinks right. angle of attack is, is attitude. And it's right. not. It's relative wind that hits the wing. Yeah, because we're all taught that in a steep bank, your angle of attack increases just by, by virtue your of... Your airspeed increases, right. not your angle of attack. Mm -hmm. So as long as you've got the indicator showing, like right here, mm -hmm. you've got a 30% margin away from stall, no matter what the, air, the, um, no matter what the bank angle is, mm -hmm. you're still safe. You're still a 30% margin away from stall. It's like having a speedometer in your car. Mm -hmm. It tells you how fast you're going. Right. In an airplane, that absolute indicator of available lift is alpha, or angle of attack. So how long does it generally take a pilot to begin to really learn how to fly an angle of attack indicator? Because it's not something that's it's in most trained. airplanes that we, that we trained in. That's correct. Um, one of the things that I, I, I've kind of coined a term after 19 years, and I call it taking a leap of faith, because we don't replace anything in the existing aircraft. Right. The airspeed indicator, all the instruments are still there. But what they start doing is getting that connection of looking at what their angle of attack is really showing mm -hmm. and what they used to add, five knots for grandma, five knots for the girlfriend, five knots for the wife. You know, <laughs> you keep adding more and more speed, right? Yeah. And having too much airspeed can be as dangerous as not enough. Mm -hmm. So if you're coming into a short field and, you're, and you've got all kinds of lift, and again, I'll go back to my display, if you're coming in for an approach, right. let's just do the simple display there, okay? okay? That's cruise. As you start to come in for an approach, right. you know that your stall is deep into the red, mm -hmm. and as you get into downwind, you're about at the low end of the green. So you're minimizing closer and closer to the perfect approach right. on final approach. So as you come into base to downwind and you're flying um, on a long final, perfect approach is 1.3 in every single aircraft. Mm -hmm. That's all the red and the blue or the blue donut on the Eagle system. Mm -hmm. And then um, as you come in, you'll flare and you'll sink. And then if you pull right to there, you're gonna stall or touch down. The other aspect of this system that you have is this head-up display, which you said was kind of an afterthought almost <laughs> to the system. Why is the, the head-up display portion of it important? You know, it's, it's funny. You, I, I tell people that I woke up at 2 in the morning and, and two weeks before the show that I introduced it a year ago. Mm -hmm. And it was the best thing that I ever done was because what we found over 20 years, almost 20 years now, is that to make an angle of attack system absolutely maximize its interaction to the pilot, it needs to be above the glare shield. Mm -hmm. So then to take that display and mount it 
underneath the, the, the glare shield, if this is the glare shield, right. we add a heads-up adapter to it, mm -hmm. reflecting that image back. That image, you can actually see right through it. Right. And it because our the design is of the display mm -hmm. allows those images to float in that glass, right. it gives that pilot that instantaneous AOA information, mm -hmm. but the images are just floating in that glass. Sure. And it's just been wonderful. The people just, their, their words are not cool. Their words are cool. <laughs> And that's exactly the same principle we use in television using a teleprompter. It's oh, yeah. It's exactly it's the same thing. It's a beam splitter technology. Mm -hmm. Yep. But you find that, that, that the pilot is better able to respond to the angle of attack when they don't have to keep looking up and down and, and back Absolutely. and forth into the yeah. panel. The pilots that put our product in the panel, I jokingly tell them, if I ever see my instrument mounted in your instrument panel, mm -hmm. I will take a screwdriver and remove it and give you your money back. Because the ones that actually come and drag other people into their airplanes uh -huh. are the people that have it above the glare shield. And now with the heads up, it's just, it's, it's like the best thing I ever did. Well, and of course, airliners and military aircraft have, been, have, have used that concept for years. Yeah, the difference though with our system, if you notice, we're the only ones that's ever been able to produce a full color mm -hmm. AOA in the HUD. Our system is full color. Mm -hmm. Most HUDs are just monochrome. And it has to do with the design of the display, mm -hmm. and it has to do with the type of beam splitter glass that we're using. So you've got uh, a whole range of angle of attack indicators. Um, and I want to talk with you a little bit. I mean, first of all, does this kind of a product need to be certified? Um, we have been through a number of tests by the FAA. Mm -hmm. And in 2011, we were the first company to get our product by the small aircraft directorate that mm -hmm. we can be installed as a minor alteration. Okay. Um, over the years, the FAA, working with ASTM, um, had put together a program and they had what's called the F-39 spec. Mm -hmm. And the F-39 spec, working with other manufacturers, other FAA officials, they put together a program where um, we go through the ACO in Chicago, and they look at the, the manufacturing process of our product, mm -hmm. and they, um, they approve our product, not certify our product, right. as a minor alteration because of its significant benefit to the pilots. I can tell you my life honestly changed over the years when, when people come up and say, my product helped them save their lives. Um, I've had a number of friends that just absolutely come up and say, and when I'm at my booth, because I've been doing this so long, mm -hmm. everybody recognizes me and, and yeah. sees our products. And I'm very honored to be a small part of that. Um, but when somebody comes and says, my product saved their life, as an engineer, I've done everything great. What do you, what do you think it was that caused this great quick movement towards angle of attack indicators because I said when most of us learned to fly it was something that was that was very exotic that almost nobody had all of a sudden it's it's one of the hot new buzzwords in aviation what caused that change you know I've, I've been working with a lot of great FAA officials um, in the past few few years uh, actually many many years now and there is a, a, a real sincere interest from both the FAA and people like me that make product that makes common sense no company would honestly invent or make a product that would fail. That's the mm -hmm. last thing I want as a manufacturer. Um, the interest is that we're losing too many good pilots, too many very, very skilled products or, or, or pilots because of very simple, instantaneous, dumb decisions. If our AOA can help a pilot show him or her that information before they make that instantaneous decision that my company and other people that make angle of attack systems and the FAA is on the right track. That's, that's just what I believe. And it goes beyond uh, just making an angle of attack system. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, I, I kind of shared with you, I, I was, um, my passion for this in, uh, goes back to 1985 where I'm a survivor of a stall spin crash myself from 100 feet off the ground. Wow. And, I, and maybe that's why 
the whole system got brought to me and and the passion going forward and and the commitment that other people say that um, that they benefit from angle of attack. Well, Mayor Corin, we are out of time, <laughs> uh, but it's fascinating to talk about. Thank you for bringing over your display and, and giving us a good primer on angle of attack. It's something that I think not enough people really understand how powerful a tool that is in the cockpit. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Aero News Network's coverage of the 59th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from Orlando, Florida, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors.